Hi, I'm Sergeant Matt Murphy. And I'm Officer Lucy Peterson. And we're from the Washington State Liquor and Cannabis Board. We're here today to discuss the responsible sale of liquor, marijuana, tobacco, and vapor products. The course objectives are the required signs, types of acceptable identifications, how to properly check ID, compliance checks, and in-house policies versus state law. Hi, I'm Sergeant Matt Murphy. And I'm Officer Lucy Peterson. We're here to discuss the responsible sale of liquor, marijuana, tobacco, and vapor products. Our number one priority is to ensure that age-restricted products do not get in the hands of underage persons. I noticed you have this tobacco and vapor sign posted. This is one of the required signs. The no minors and no firearms sign must also be posted in an age-restricted area. These are the required marijuana signs that must be posted at all marijuana locations. If you have a medical marijuana endorsement, this no minor sign must also be posted on your license premise. The first thing to remember is that it's a privilege to buy age-restricted products. There's no legal right to buy. You should know that you have total control of all the sales that occur at your premise. If you're unsure about an ID, don't sell. You cannot serve or sell to anyone who is not eligible. For marijuana and alcohol products, which includes beer, wine, and spirits, you have to be at least 21 years of age and not showing any apparent signs of intoxication. For medical marijuana, you have to be at least 18 with a medical marijuana patient card. For tobacco and vapor products, you have to be at least 21 years of age. The best defense against selling to underage person is to know how to properly check an ID. First, ask for the ID. Second, have the customer actually hand you the ID. Do not accept a person's wallet. Next, check the date of birth, check the photo, check the expiration date, and then verify the other information. You will receive acceptable IDs that have holes punched in them. These IDs are legal as long as the hole punch does not obscure critical information such as the date of birth, physical description, expiration date, photo, or signature. Remember, if you have any concerns about the ID, stop, don't sell. Types of acceptable identification include driver's license, instruction permit, or ID card issued by any U.S. state, U.S. territory, District of Columbia, or Canadian province. A valid temporary Washington driver's license, which includes the paper ID, U.S. Armed Forces ID card, Merchant Marine ID card issued by the U.S. Coast Guard, official passport, or Washington State tribal enrollment card. The law states that these are the only types of ID you can accept. There's a lot of technology and resources available to help ensure you do not sell age-restricted products to underage persons. Some examples are ID scanners, point-of-sale verification systems, UV black lights, ID checking guides, and various phone applications. If you do not use the provided resources or use them improperly, you are putting yourself and your employer at risk. Remember, these technologies are not a substitute for actually checking the person's ID. These are some examples of acceptable Washington State identifications. We have a Washington State Enhanced Driver's License, Enhanced Identification Card, as well as an Identification Card. Notice that these are all vertical. We also have the standard Washington Driver's License. A person can buy age-restricted products on their day of birth, after midnight. When you see a vertical ID, be very cautious. This ID was issued when the person was under the age of 21. Look to the language to the left or right of the photo to see when they turned 18 or 21. What about if somebody brings someone else's ID? That's probably what we refer to as a fraudulent ID, which is when someone is using someone else's ID. Some ways to check for this are to see if the photo matches the person that's on there. You can ask them some questions like, what is your address? And see if it matches. You can also ask the person presenting the ID to sign a separate piece of paper and then compare the two signatures. Or you can ask for another form of ID. Remember, if someone is presenting that ID, both that person and the person who gave it to them can be arrested. How do I know it's a fake ID? Mm -hmm. So someone might present a manufactured or fake ID to you. These could be photocopied or manufactured on a different printer. You're going to want to look for security features that can be seen easily. If the seals of authenticity can be seen without difficulty, the ID could be fake. You're also going to want to check the weight and thickness of the ID, the fonts of the ID, and the color resolutions of the ID. So look at the overall color of the ID. Generally, when computer-generated documents are copied, they gain a pink hue. Make sure the numbers are pasted over the picture. Make sure the bush in the background go over the photo and also the mountains. 
if somebody brings fake ID, uh, can I keep it or I give back to him? When you're dealing with IDs, remember you're dealing with other people's property. You cannot take their property. You can take the ID long enough for law enforcement to examine it. You can tell the person that you're going to call the local police. If they run or leave the store, you actually have the abandoned property. So turn over any available information that you have, the date, the time, the ID user, to the either local police or the Washington State Liquor Cannabis Board. Remember, it's not worth a physical altercation. If the customer becomes confrontational, just give the ID back. I'd like to know, what about the stings? So the stings, or as we call them, compliance checks, are done to ensure that you are not selling age-restricted products to minors. The Washington State Liquor and Cannabis Board, Food and Drug Administration, as well as local police and health departments will also conduct their own compliance checks. You can also do your own in-house compliance checks. The Washington State Liquor Cannabis Board hires underage persons to ensure compliance with age-restricted products. The minors do not look overly mature for their age. They do not show fake or altered IDs. They also, if asked, may show their real ID or none at all. And if asked, they can say they're 21 years old. Through education, voluntary compliance with retailers, and partnership with local law enforcement, the compliance rate with age-restricted products is typically 80 to 90 percent. Still, some of those places will sell. Here are some of the reasons why they sold. The clerk tried to do the math, but they got the math wrong. They were distracted by a phone call or something else going on around them. They couldn't physically read the ID. They utilized some of the ID scanners or equipment that they had, but simply didn't trust it. Or they confused the language on the ID saying that they were 18 or 21. One of the most important things to remember is, if you're unsure about the age of a person, just don't sell. You can create your own in-house policies that are more strict than the state law. Remember, it is no state law requiring you to check anyone's ID. An in-house policy could be something like you check the ID of everyone who appears to be under 30, or you don't accept vertical IDs. Can I open a pack and sell a single cigarette from that? No. It is illegal to sell single cigarettes or give away free samples. If two people come in a group uh, to buy alcohol, will I check both ID or one is okay? Good question. The only person that's required to have the ID is the person that's actually purchasing the alcohol. However, be cautious though. If a minor does get alcohol, you could be held accountable. Remember, both employers and employees have the legal responsibility to make sure that age-restricted products do not get sold to minors. If you sell marijuana to a minor, it can result in a gross misdemeanor. The sale of liquor can result in a gross misdemeanor. Also, the licensee will receive administrative violations. It is also illegal to sell tobacco or vapor products to a minor. The Liquor and Cannabis Board has the option to handle these violations as a criminal charge or with an administrative penalty. It is important to keep your staff trained and informed by having routine meetings that discusses current laws and emerging issues. Do you have any more questions while we're here? No, that's fine. We appreciate your time. For more information on the topics that were covered today, please visit lcb.wa.gov. Thanks for joining us.